Teach us. Let your spirit flow through us. Teach us what you want us to learn this day. Lord, we just love and praise you for all that is going on around us, for this season of joy and happiness where we celebrate the birth of your son. And Lord, let us remember what this season's about, that it's not about the gifts, that it's about, it's about one gift, the one that you gave to humanity, the Christ child. Lord, we just thank you for him, and we love and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we went through a series the other week about how God doesn't change. And nothing he said in the Bible is going to change from the beginning, even through eternity in heaven with him. It's going to all be as it was written and as it was spoken. And I think, uh, you know, we were talking about some of the ways some of the churches are believing, the way they're praying. And I think we need to get back to the basics. So today, we're going to go over the spiritual gifts. And we're going to start in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 1 through 11. It says, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye, ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge but by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The Spirit is in control of everything. He gives us everything. When we accepted Christ as our Savior, He armed us with everything we needed to get through this life and to be His witness. The biggest problem is most times people don't even know what gifts they have or don't care or don't study enough to understand what their Spirit was, has given them. Now, we are the body of Christ. And we need to earnestly desire the best gifts. And Christ said, and yet he would show us a more excellent way. We all were given gifts. Sometimes, sometimes I'm not sure the gifts I have. Sometimes I am. Sometimes it's hard to have a gift and know what's going to happen and have to deal with it. I think sometimes I can see things when I'm praying. And if you hear me stumble sometimes when I'm praying for somebody and I want this healing to happen, I'll see in my head that that person is not going to come out of the hospital. Kent was one. When we started praying for Kent, the minute I started praying, I knew he was never going to make it out of the hospital. I knew that from the very beginning I started praying. And that's why I give him to God and God's will because I, I see what's going to happen and I, I don't like it. I don't understand it, but I know it's God's will. And I praise God for it because God knows better than I do. And the only way I know how to concede to his will is to give that person to him and stop asking for what I want in that person's life or what God wants in that person's life. 
And I'm sure some of you have felt the same way on certain things. There's tons of gifts. You know, what are the ministry gifts? One is wisdom. Alice possesses that. I'm not real good at that one. That's one I'm not, I don't have too much of that gift. But Alice has that gift very, very full. Knowledge, faith, healing. I know we have a prayer warrior in this church. I'm not sure who it is. You might know who you are, but I'm not sure who it is. But we have a prayer warrior in this church because we see too many miracles here when we pray. Somebody is a prayer warrior in this church. Healing, miracles, prophecy, helps, administration, leadership. All your elders and leaders of the church and our country need that. They need administration gifts. They need leadership gifts. They need distinguishing spirits gifts. Those are important to the leaders of the churches. Many don't seek them because they want to see things work out the way they want. You know, I would love to build a church. Evidently, God don't want one right now. The last time we decided to build a church, Don was still alive, and we hit the county, and the county wanted $300,000 just to put a turn lane in before they'd even give us permits to build. You know, and God, right at the moment, I don't think he wants us to build a church. I think this church is doing fine. Look at the miracles and look at the ministry this church has. You know, I think he's going to let us keep working the way we're working because if we put our efforts towards building a church, what about our ministries? You know, our ministries is the church, and that's what people forget. It's not a great building. It's us. It's the people. It's the missions that we have and the people that we take care of. That's the church. Not some fancy building that will attract attention, but the building that performs and uh, works the way God wants it to work. That's the church. And people forget that. Speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues, that gift is still around. Don't be afraid of it. Paul says, well, there's different types of tongues, too. You know, he said if he was going to speak, he'd go in his, in his closet and speak in the heavenly tongues to the Father. If I had to give the tongues, that's the one I would want. The other one I would want was the one that the apostles used when they spoke after they, Christ had risen again at Pentecost. And they didn't babble. They spoke from what I understand the scriptures in their language, but she heard it in her language, she heard it in her language, he heard it in his language. I wish I had that gift, especially working the food bank, because there's so many times we have a Hispanic come in and we have no idea what they're saying. I would love for them to understand what we're saying in their own tongue. You know, that's a tongue that I would like to have. Sometimes I've been to churches in the last 20 years where they spoke in tongues. There's a guideline for that, too. And if they break that guideline, then that's not God's tongues. If it's tongues are spoken in a church, there's supposed to be one or two, and there's always supposed to be an interpreter. If there's no interpreter, it's not supposed to be spoken. So if, if they're speaking in tongues the whole day and there's no interpreter, it's not God's. I've had him speak to me in tongues with an interpreter, and I knew it wasn't God's. You know, we got to watch because the devil's very sly. You know, there was, we were at another church. It wasn't at this one. And they came to the church, and they spoke to me, two of them, in the back room, and then there was an interpreter there. And I told him, okay, let's see what God tells me. You know, because he was supposed to tell me something within a week. You know, nothing was told. You know, if that would have been of God, God would have revealed something to me. You know, it, it would not have been a mystery at the end of that week. He would have revealed to me what he wanted me to do. And he sort of did, because when I found out it was not of him, I told him, bye. You know, and that was the end of that. We have to be very careful. Because these are the tools that the Holy Spirit utilizes for the ongoing ministry of the church. So we need to be careful not to take away from them. Not one part of them are we able to take away if we're going to work 
for him because these are the ministries that he gave us to uplift the church, to exalt the church, and we need to embrace them. Give me some discussion. <laughs> Say something. You know, and I see so much. You know, me and Alice have talked to people from other churches, and, and they're upset because God didn't give them this or God didn't give them that. Maybe God don't want you to have it. God didn't give me the million dollars I wanted. But I'm not upset. He's smarter than me. He knows I'd blow it. You know. He gave me a wife that keeps me down to earth. Which was a better gift. You know, our ministry is because the two of us work together and the two of us work with the Lord. You know, we don't always do everything right. Another problem that I see elders get into and I've been trying to slowly pass some things on is you'll get somebody to come and talk to you and they want an answer right now, especially if there's an argument between two. And then they get angry with you because you can't tell them what to do. Well, I can't tell Alice what to do until I tell Mike what to do until I hear Jennifer's side of the story. I've got to hear both sides of the story. He could just be spouting. And then from that, I decide where the truths are. And then I can start helping people. Then I can start talking to them about what they need to do to fix a problem. And we need to be careful how we deal with people because of that. We can't just hear one side of the story. We've got to hear both. That's called discernment. And we can't use the gift of discernment if we're taking sides. That's not discernment. That's taking sides. Even in a marriage... Me and Alice don't give in to each other. We discuss. And then we do what we believe is right for the family and for us. What God would want us to do together as a team. Yeah, and that's discernment. That's discernment in the family. That's discernment in the church. You know, we're brothers and sisters. How many of you have had brothers and sisters? How many of you have fought with your brothers and sisters? We're going to fight with people in the church too, but we still got to love them and we still got to deal with them and we still got to accept them as gods. Me and Mike have had our arguments. It doesn't matter because we're brothers in Christ and we talk till we come to the right decision, a decision that edifies us, edifies God and uplifts us in the church. And it's okay to argue because we're going to. God knows that. You know, and, and if you argued really bad, and you know your parents corrected you, and God's going to correct us too, because he is our father. Spiritual gifts are given to build up the church and edify God. And we need to understand them all and believe in all of them, because he gave them to us to use. They are given to share his message and glorify him. Paul shares in the scriptures that there are a variety of gifts. These special gifts are given through the Holy Spirit. One person, the gift of healing, while someone else, they have the gift of prophecy. Many spiritual gifts are listed in the Bible. How many of you read a, the spiritual gifts and how many of you have studied about what they actually do? How many of you have seen the gifts work through the apostles? And understood it. Some of us are given the gift of healing. You might have that gift of healing your whole life. You might have it just for one person. I felt bad one time because I think I had the gift of healing one time and I was afraid to use it. And it was a little crippled girl. And something in my mind said just reach out and pick her up and heal her. And I couldn't because of my lack of faith. And I believe that I was given it at that time for that reason. And I didn't understand it. I was a young Christian. And my lack of faith stopped me from doing what God might have allowed me to do if I had just stepped out in faith and picked up that little crippled girl and hugged her. We never know. The Spirit knows. And we need to trust Him. 
I believe and know that all believers have the gift of faith because you couldn't believe if you didn't have faith. All of us have at least one gift, and I'm sure he gave us others. Lucy, the way she talks, she's had the gift of teaching for a long time. Hope so. Yeah. Alice song. Listen to her voice. You know. Some of us have these gifts at different levels, you know, depending on how it's needed. You know, some of us could be just pouring with a certain gift, filled to the brim, where others, because they've held back the spirit, like when I was telling you about touch, picking up that little girl, have, have it very little because we're afraid to use it, afraid to utilize it. And that's what we got to protect ourselves from. We need to be able, when God tells us to do something or shows us something, to just step out and do it and not care about the result because the result is in his hands, not ours. We need to reach out in faith and step forward with that gift and use it, utilize it. Gifts of administration, leadership, and mercy, and distinguishing spirits. These are the gifts are used to organize and administrate and protect the church so that it may best carry out its responsibilities to the world. And I take that responsibility very seriously. There's a few things I'm very protective of with the church. Same with the business. Number one, a person in leadership should not have any control of the money. You know, it's too much power. It really is, you know. Other people should deal with that. You know, our treasures should have the gift of organization and administration. Everybody in those, this organization that has any position should have those gifts, and we need to discern it. Elders, pastors, and bishops, and deacons, I believe they need more than just the gift of administration and the gift of organization and the gift of discerning spirits. I think they have to have something above and beyond that. And I believe that needs to be a calling from God to that position. I think teaching is similar because when you say gift of teaching, you're talking about compassion, empathy, understanding. All those, all those things go into making a good teacher. Yeah, they do. They do. But there are certain positions in the church that I believe are a true calling because you've got so much power. You know, we could nominate people into those positions. And I've talked to some of the elders about it. I think they need to be called because if God's not calling them into that position, and it doesn't matter what gifts they have, they're not going to be able to handle it because that's a, that's a different calling. You know? And I, I feel strongly about that. And then there's guidelines on those people. You know, and Timothy and Titus, Bill went over that. And Timothy and Titus, there's a specific guideline the whole way down for them to even be nominated. And we need to follow that. Everything in the Bible, we need to follow it word for word. And we need to study it and know it. Because if you read the end of the Bible, he says if you take one thing out of the Bible, he will remove you out of his kingdom. If you change one jot or one tittle, which are the two least characters in the Hebrew alphabet, you, know, you can't even take a period away. A period was there for a reason. Yeah, and we got to be careful about that. Some young Christians and some older Christians are still asking the same questions, and I get a lot of these questions. What are spiritual gifts? How do I recognize them? How will I know my specific spiritual gift? 
where there will be an extraordinary experience that will allow me to recognize these gifts given by God? <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. You know, the first thing we need to do is be reading about them, studying about them, and praying about them. You know, pray for the gifts you think God's given you. Pray for him to show you the gifts that he's given you. You know, I believe everybody here has gifts. I believe some aren't using them or recognizing them, but everybody has them. Yeah, you know, Randy, I remember the other year when I told you you were such an inspiration to me just by what you were doing, getting out and helping. You know, it was a real inspiration for me. You know, There's so much, and we've got to open our hearts and our eyes to them, our ears. And we need to be teaching this. And, you know, I think a lot of the churches need to be speaking more about this, more about the gifts, and more about God hasn't changed. You know, we're taking and making, I don't know how to say this without sounding stupid, we're taking a great holy God and turning him into a lesser God by the way we teach. And we need to stop that. We need to have a fear of the Lord. You know, we need to hold ourselves accountable and responsible for the way we act and the way we do things in our churches and in our home life. You know, heaven and hell is real. You know, I remember listening to a guy many years ago. He was in Vegas, and he was talking to the people in Vegas and uh, one of the girls was sitting next to him, and she told him she thought she was fine. And he said, well, do you believe in Christ? She said, no, I don't. He said, that's a shame. He said, you're so beautiful, and you're so smart. And he said, it's a shame that all that's going to waste and burn in hell because you didn't take time to learn about our Lord. And he was right. Yeah, I feel bad for those that don't know about Christ because they're not going to see heaven. I... hurt sometimes when I think me and God are arguing. I don't ever want to not be with him the rest of my eternity. You know. What is my purpose in life is the, one of the questions I get asked all the time. What is my purpose in life? I can't tell you what your purpose in life is. It is. It is. It is. That's scripture. Yeah. And if we look at it that way, then everything we do or attempt to do is to worship God. And that's what our gifts come out of. You know, we may not recognize them until later. Terry and I were talking about this not too long ago because when mm -hmm. um, when Marie first asked me to teach the Sunday school class, or the Bible study class, I, I told her no. I said, I'm not a teacher. I said, I don't know how to study. I don't know how to write. I'm not a teacher. I don't know how to do that. And she kept harassing me about it, and nobody else is stepping up. So I went ahead and stepped up. And I'll tell you what, it, it's, it's, um, I stepped up to glorify God. Somebody needed to do that for this group. And no one else felt that they were able. I, I knew that I could figure out a way to do it. I just didn't figure out I'd be good at it. You know. And so I did it for the glory of God. And it has been such a blessing. You're 100% right. To me, as well as one of my things. Terry. And I was going there. Maybe I said it wrong. Because you're right. We were put here to glorify and praise God. And spend time with God. But these were Christians. They... they claim to be saved, but what am I supposed to do the rest of my life? I can't tell you that. Study. Get in the Word. Ask God. God knows. I don't know what you're supposed to do. And that's the thing. And I think an awful lot of times we don't recognize our gifts until we need them. Yeah. Sometimes I think maybe a gift is only given, like you said, just for a specific purpose. And sometimes they're always there, but since we haven't tried it, we don't know it. I don't think sometimes we know it until we try it. Because sometimes when a door opens, we need to just kind of walk through, you know, and pray while we're doing that. And God will show us pretty quickly whether we're supposed to be there or not. Well, yeah, because walking through could be scary. Oh, yeah. 
And maybe that's the door he wants you to go through, is that scary one. Go ahead, get a hand. And we understand that. Not all, of them. Not all of them do. Not all of them do. And that's how you need to counsel them. Are you living by faith? And explain what faith is. And what it's just like a child when they're learning to walk. That child is afraid to take that first step. But it's taking that first step and then taking the courage of the second step. And pretty soon they're running. Can we see God? Can we touch him? No. No. But we hear him through his word. We hear him in our conversations with him. God is always there. Always. I believe he's a lot closer than what we think he is. Exactly. He's right here. Yeah. 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 And I think, well, even the apostles, Christ talk to them about their faith because they were asking him questions and he said if you had the faith of a grain of mustard seed you could say to that mountain fall down or move and it would, it would move mm -hmm. you know it's our lack of faith that holds us back from everything and we all run into that every day somewhere we run into our lack of faith and that's the biggest problem you know and we need to figure out how to get around that that day with that little girl is my lack of faith that stopped me from picking her up Could be. Pride is a sin. It's one of the big sins. Yeah. Once you recognize I'm prideful, you and God work it out. And your life will change. And it could be other things too. You know, because, I mean, we know even as much as we study the Bible that we're still sinners. You know, every day we commit some kind of a sin in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. You know, and a lot of that is what's keeping us from having that super strong faith is we're just you know and it is 90 percent of it is pride because i mean look at what we do i mean look at throughout humanity what we've done we've taken the laws that god has given us and have added to them and done everything else to them so that we can make sense to us with them you know and his his rules were weren't that hard they're pretty simple you know but we had to take and make it better so that we could understand it. We need to get back to the basics. And I think that's the problem they had before the flood, and I think that's the problem we're having after the flood, is we need to just stick with the basics, what he put into here, and don't add or take away from it. Right here. This is all we need. Some people will remember God has a plan, and the fact of having spiritual gifts will be accepted. The need to know how, when, where, and why may unfold in time or not. It depends on us. And it depends on how much time we put with God to understand what he has given us, whether it ever unfolds so that we can understand it. He wants us to be with him 24-7, but he wants special time with us also. There are various places in Scripture that provide a spiritual gift list. The New Testament shares passages which mention spiritual gifts. The Bible shares that there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit and, the same ver uh, and a variety of activities is the one who empowers them all. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 1. And the greatest gift of all is what? actually love he says without love they mean nothing yeah and that love is agape yes it is highly favoring God and man you put God first you put someone else first and you'll learn about agape love that's right 
So remember, anything we do, just keep love in it. Keep God in it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do love you. Lord, as we go through this next service, Lord, let your spirit just keep flowing through this church. Touch each and every one of us, Lord, and bring us closer to you. And let us understand that love and all that you put before us. We just love and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.